a historic day for many reasons. First of all, you can see that this room is jammed packed. I believe this is the first time that we've had such a comprehensive invitation to all of our Campus Guild members to attend an AFT Faculty Guild meeting. So we're very happy about that. And welcome, welcome to all of our, our sisters and brothers from our fellow LEMC unions. And I'd like to um, state who those unions are. Of course, we have AFT 1521 faculty. Raise your hands, everybody. Yay, Yay. okay. And uh, I'd like to especially point out the members of that group who have participated in our Union Leadership Summit, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, let's see, Margie Long, okay. Monica Moreno, Jeannie Casara, Diana Bonilla. Very good, thank you for your participation. Um, AFT 1521A Classified, we have Suzanne Mignosi. Where is she? There she is. Dorothy Munt, in particular. And we have Dorothy, there you are, good. And we have other members of that group, please raise your hand. Lots and lots of people, wonderful. We have 17, 721, the classified supervisors. Zoila has been your lead on that, along with Rosalie Torres over there, yes. And will all the supervisors please raise their hands? Excellent, wow, a, a lot of you are here, wonderful. We have our Building and Construction Trades Council, uh, raise your hands if you are part of that group. William Roan is your uh, union leader. Yay! And he's been a really essential part of our leadership summit, so thank you, William. 9-11 uh, Teamsters, Kathy Brinkman, Ludy Viegas in particular, were our leaders on the leadership summit. And will the other Teamsters, I think there's only, there are only two others, actually. So, um, and then we have Local 99 SEIU Operations. Edma Lopez is your representative in our group. Raise your hand if you're part of uh, 99. Okay, excellent. So today is a historic moment because of the participation of all of our union members in today's meeting. And you're all here, hopefully, to support our uh, efforts uh, to create collegiality on this campus and to create a united um, campus where collegiality is the law, the rule, rather than the exception. And Tim's here as well, adjunct rep. Raise your hand, Tim. <laughs> okay. Um, Dr. Perez. There you go. Would you like to say a few words and address the Yes, I, I first of all wanted to say I hope you all had a good Thanksgiving and uh, we have the holidays coming and it just warms my heart to see all of you here today because uh, all the hard work that all the respective unions have done uh, to come to this point. Uh, I'm excited about this pledge. I'm excited about the idea and the promise that we all can work together united to make LA Mission College, a great college, a college that will be here long after we're gone and serving the communities we serve and the students we serve. We all have big ideas and big visions. Let us realize those visions. So thank you for coming and thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Dr. Perez. Okay, I don't wanna give my back to anybody, so I'll move up here. Um, so you might be wondering, how did this all begin? We've been speaking about this in our AFT meetings continuously, but I'd like to summarize and reiterate um, how this all happened. Uh, last summer, we realized that we had a real need to mobilize because we had two propositions on the ballot, Propositions 30 and 32. And there was a, a need, this was not something we could fool around with, I don't have to tell you the details on that, but there was a need to be united. And one of the things we realized on this campus as your union leaders, that there was a lack of unity. And we felt that that lack of unity had to be addressed if we were to be effective politically in our pursuits with the two propositions. And of course you know, it went well. Yay! <laughs> That's all I can say. And thank you all for all of your efforts in making it go well. Um, we had uh, about 29% of the vote in favor of Proposition 30 came from the County of Los Angeles. So that's just phenomenal if you think about it. And our unions contacted over 500,000 uh, union uh, members throughout the county. So it, it didn't happen by accident. 
Um, when I took office last summer, a number of faculty came to me, and I was very surprised, but they had issues, and those issues were not uh, grievance material. The a grievance is um, when the contract has not been respected, basically. But yet there were issues. And the question was, what do you do with those issues? How are they processed? And they need to be processed. We would be amiss if we were to ignore them. Many times these issues were complaints. They were feelings of uh, tension between faculty members. And um, we, did, we quickly realized that Article 5 assures us a way of processing those issues in an attempt to create a more tranquil campus environment. Article 5 allows us to bring problems to the attention of the administration uh, so that they can be investigated and mediated, possibly, or both. Uh, so we've, we've been having this ongoing sort of vetting and, and taking care of all of these instances of, of tension that came to our attention. Uh, and quite frankly, you know, the union's job is not to support one faculty member against another faculty member. That's not what we're here to do. But it is to assure a non-hostile workplace for all union members. So we would be amiss if we were to turn our heads and pretend that these issues didn't exist on campus. And this led us to close collaboration with Dr. Paris and also with um, VP Villanueva. And um, we need to thank them for that because they've worked very hard with trying to settle these issues uh, during the course of the last few months. It also led to bringing in mediators, again with Dr. Perez's uh, support, to address some hot spots in, on campus regarding certain uh, units that were having a lot of problems. And some of that is ongoing, uh, some has been resolved, and there have been some really positive outcomes of all of these efforts. Um, but the one thing I'd like to point out to you is that uh, our unions had an opportunity to come together and to work on this project together as a united front, and that's very important. Um, through our dialogue, we've been having a number of union meetings, which united all of the union leaders, and we've had dialogues discussing the problem of bullyism, discussing the type of environment we would like to work in, and uh, we pretty much recognize that if you want to de define bullyism, basically, it's a pattern of repeated actions of aggression towards an individual. Bullies intimidate, terrorize, and undermine. And the result of those actions is a hostile work environment for all of us. Bullying, in, a, in, a, in essence, is an attack on our personal human uh, dignity. Um, I would like to share with you a very small clip from uh, a play by Shakespeare, it's one minute, and it's uh, Shylock's monologue in, from The Merchant of Venice. So, and uh, he really is the epitome of extreme bullyism, unfortunately. He's a, a desperate, lonely uh, character, uh, and he's really at his rope's end. And what's really sad is that his community has endorsed the type of bullyism that he suffers, being spat at, being called names, being humiliated in public, and has, has perpetrated that type of action for centuries. So it gives us a lot to think about, and it's an extreme, but I think it's good to start with the extreme. Okay, Monica? Lights, is there a way to turn the lights off? He hath disgraced me and hindered me half a million laughed at my losses, mocked at my gains, scorned my nation, thwarted my bargains, cooled my friends, heated my enemies, and what's his reason? I am a Jew! Hath that a Jew eyes? Hath that a Jew hands? Organs? Dimensions? Senses? Affections? Passions? Fed with the same food? Hurt with the same weapons? Subject to the same diseases, healed by the same means, 
warmed and cooled by the same winter and summer as a Christian is. If you prick us, do we not bleed? If you tickle us, do we not laugh? If you poison us, do we not die? And if you wrong us, shall we not revenge? If we are like you in the rest, we will resemble you in that. If a Jew wrong a Christian, what is his humility? Revenge? If a Christian wrong a Jew, what should his sufferings be? By Christian example. Why revenge? The villainy you teach me, I will execute. And it shall go hard, but I will better the instruction. It's, it's powerful. It, it, it's really an emotional piece. But the fact is Shylock, in his desperation, calls to the attention, um, his audience, to the attention of his audience, the fact that we're all human and we're all made of the same substance. And we tend to forget that. Um, unfortunately, he goes from that message of oneness and that message of universals, which in cultural anthropology, I'm sure we have some cultural anthropologists in the house and some linguists, this idea of universals, of those things that are our com commonalities as human beings that make us all the same, which we tend to forget. He goes from that message of one with, oneness, and he um, continues with that question, and if we're not wronged, do we not seek revenge? This is an age-old question. How do you answer oppression? How do you answer bullyism? And uh, many people have studied this question. And the response is, it doesn't help to respond to aggression with aggression. As hard as that might sound, it might be a momentary fix, but it's not a long-lasting one. And history says that over and over again. Um, there is a uh, very renowned uh, pacifist by the name of uh, Sheila Ellsworthy with the Oxford Research Group. And uh, let me turn, hold on one second. And uh, she basically um, wrote, or actually did a, uh, a speech on um, how to respond to bullyism without becoming a thug yourself? And I think this is a very important question that we all need to consider. And she comes up with a couple of hints which are valid really for all of us and which are consistently found throughout the literature. First of all, um, we need to enter into an honest dialogue with ourselves. We need to self-examine. We need to find out who we are and the role that we play in this dynamic Mackerberg dance of bullyism, because they're the bullies, the perpetrators. Those roles don't always stay the same. Second thing we need to do is we, we need to recognize that we cannot control our environment. And this is an element for us which makes us feel desperate many times. Seems like there's no recourse when, in, when we're in a difficult environment. But the fact is, we can control one thing, and that is our reaction to that environment. And that's extremely powerful. That's where our power lies. It's our right and our power. Another thing we need to do is we need to face our fears. Because it's so easy to get wrapped up in the drama of a situation. I know, I do it all the time. Go home, start thinking about things, getting upset, imagining where things are going to go, and it'll probably never go in those directions. But in the meantime, the damage is done because we're paralyzed by our fear. We need to get onto the balcony. I mentioned it at our last meeting. Take a step back and decide where to go from there. Another aspect, we need to direct our anger. It's natural to be angry when we've been offended. It's part of being human. We can't deny that. But the question is, what do you do with that anger? And one of the most powerful things that you can do with that anger is redirect it to a positive cause. Lastly, and this is most important, we need to find community. That is extremely powerful. Find other individuals who are like-minded with the same dreams and the same objectives. 
and we need to mobilize with that community, and we need to go forth in making changes, positive changes. We did that with our political campaign, and here on campus, we're doing that with this collegiality anti-bullyism project. We have found our community here on campus with our brother and sister unions, and this is wonderful. Most of the permanent employees, with the exception of the president and the VPs, are union members. You are all union members. Yeah. Right. <laughs> How powerful is that? What a powerful force we are. And uh, we have found our community here through these leadership summit committee meetings where we've discussed the issue of collegiality, the issue of bullyism, and we've decided to take some action. So right now, I would like to ask the various people who have participated in the Leadership Summit Committee to stand up. Please come forth. Don't be shy. Come on. You're all there. Okay. There were about 13 of us sitting at the table at any given time. Not everybody's here, though. Um, please tell us something about this experience and what it has meant to you. Diana? Um, it was a time where all of us came together and courageously spoke about how we all have been feeling. And it was a really amazing opportunity to listen with compassion and with an open mind to help this campus move forward in a positive direction and no longer look back, just keep looking forward. And that's what it, what it meant for me. For me, I was really excited about it because it's been a year since we started Mission College Day on Tuesday, and Mission College Day was originated to promote collegiality, to promote friendship, connectedness, and it has done that. It started small, it's getting bigger and bigger, and that's what it means to me for everybody to get along to be happy, to be one, and be Mission College family together. Hi, for me, it demonstrated that the collaboration of all the unions showed the unity that most of us want for this campus and that we have been needing for years and years. So I think just the action of participating in this, for me, it made me feel like I'm doing something about it. And um, what I would like to see, the outcome, is to see a lot of peace in the future in terms of our collaboration together and understanding one another coming from uh, all factors, classified, faculty, and I'm representing administration as well. I joined the committee because I've been a part-time instructor here since 1991. And I've seen the changes on this campus. And I know we can go back to how it was. Even though we have many more faculty, many more employees, it doesn't mean we can't really have a wonderful working environment for all of us. Oh, I'm mixed. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, too, joined this committee because I, I'm a delegate alternate for my union. And, and I agree with everything they've said. We need to go back to being a teaching community. We, we're here for our students and the community. That's what we need to do. We need to put petty differences aside and just be a community college. Um, well, I represent the Teamster Union at Mission College, and I, I participated in the, um, the leadership summit. Um, as representing the Teamsters at the campus. Um, I, I was very excited. I think this is a really unique opportunity. I've never been on a campus where we've had the opportunity for all of the six unions to come together. It's just a really, really beginning here at the campus, but I think it provides a wonderful forum to start to work together. And in terms of today and this event, I think that the pledge has really been spearheaded by the AFT um, within the last couple of months. Um, I think that's an opportunity. I think it's 
an opportunity for growth right now for this campus. I think it's been a very difficult year for many of us here um, in this room. And I'm really hoping that if anybody's been following 2012 and the end of 2012, I'm really hoping that um, we'll have an opportunity to really evolve as a humanity just a little bit higher. And I think that this is kind of a starting point for us. So thank you. I started uh, uh, participating here just to be, just to reaffirm that we're all part of a family working together for our, uh, for the success of our students. And uh, it's been a real privilege uh, these long years working for the, working for the college and all our students. And thanks Louise for spearheading this because it's a good thing. We all sh never should forget that we're part of a family here. When uh, Louise invited me to be part of the summit, I said, sure, why not? We don't have a football stadium to go to, so I might as well be part of something. And to me, to be honest with you, that's where my heart is, in sports. That's where I come from, that's what I know. And I know that when you have a bad week, you look forward to, your, you know, to going to a football game, to a volleyball tournament or something. We don't have a whole bunch of that here. so. That's part of our problem, that we don't have anywhere to release all that anxiety and stress. So uh, I figured, why not? Let's, 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 let's go here and see what these ladies have to say and gentlemen. And um, much to my surprise, they have a lot to say. We have a very, very similar feelings, very similar experiences, and we need to give it a name. Uh, I, for one, am a graduate of therapy. There's, nobody's beyond therapy, and therapy is good. So we need more arenas where we can actually share and uh, respect each other's feelings or shortcomings and et cetera. But most of all, I believe in education. I am here because I believe in education. I come from an educational family. It all started way back from my mom when she used to teach uh, Sunday school, otherwise known as catecismo in Spanish. And so I come from that branch of education. And for me to be part of this institution for 20 years, and then someone, somewhere down the line, someone tells me that I can't do what I need to do, and I have to be this way to certain people, or I said this, some, somebody took it wrong. For that, I just said, something's going on here. Well, I, I think I speak English, but maybe it's my tone. So for one, I knew that I'm not perfect. I accept it. I'm here to embrace that and to go forward and make better relations with everyone. I appreciate all of you, I mean, what you do here, and I admire the faculty. I'm a total fan of faculty, just in case you don't know that. And so I am here to do my part and certainly to back up all of these people that are up here and you. And if you ever need anything from me, all you have to do is ask. That's what I'm here for. We covered everything. Zoila basically covered everything I was gonna say. <laughs> so. A oh, ditto. <laughs> Anyways, I was real excited when we were at training at UCLA, and um, Monica and Louise came up to me and told me about this idea of getting together. <clears throat> Sorry, a little nervous. Okay. We're doing good. And um, I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what else to say because Zoila said it all. <laughs> well, thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for coming. <laughs> um, what I have found with this experience is that we, when we first gathered the first time, I realized that a lot of the people that are around the table already knew each other. So we were already a family. So the foundation was already there. It wasn't difficult to talk to each other and it wasn't difficult to find a common goal. Um, we, this group has met at least nine times. We have met since uh, September. And we have really worked collaboratively with this pledge. No, if it was, we had, we um, looked at it, we said, do you like it? Uh, one person said, mm, I'm not happy with that. Okay, we take it off. It literally was like that the whole time. The whole, and I'm the one who wrote it, so I know how many times I had to delete, cut, and paste. So I must have around 15 drafts of this pledge, and we did not finalize it until yesterday. 
we still made changes. We met yesterday, and it, it's 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 amazing, amazing how we came together and how we put this together and how without all of us treating each other with respect and uh, with integrity and valuing each other's ideas, we wouldn't have been able to accomplish this. We really would not have. No one, everyone who came in, came in without an ego. Everyone came in, we welcomed and we, and we wanted your opinions and we wanted your information and we wanted your input. And that was not just me, not just Louise. It was all of us. It was everyone at the table, Margie, Diana, everyone, Suzanne, all of us. And, and at one point, there was even a little bit of bickering, believe it or not. Wow, can you imagine that? <laughs> and that was OK. That was OK, because that's what we were there for. We were there to listen to everyone's ideas and to come up with something that we were all going to be proud of, that we were all going to introduce to you, and that was meaningful and meant something to all of us. So with that, I think we're ready. Did everybody speak? Right? OK, thank you. We're going to start with the introduction. To the pledge. To the yeah. pledge. Thank you. There is a, a one-minute video clip that says it all. It sums up the spirit of what we did, what the pledge is all about. So please watch it. It's one minute. And if you need to go, please just wait a few more minutes. We're going to have the actual signing in a second. Don't leave. If you support this, don't leave without signing. Civility is respect. Respect. Mutual respect. Treating others as you want to be treated. Learning from one another. Listening. Listening. Civility is knowing that all men, that all men, and women, are created equal. And acting like it. Civility is diverse. Open. Cooperative. Supportive. Civility is expression. Expression. Debate. Community. Integrity. Civility is doing what you know is right. I deserve your respect. Your respect. I deserve your recognition. Your recognition. I deserve your acceptance. We are one. One campus. One community. Celebrate the differences. So we'll read along together. It says, Los Angeles Mission College Union Leadership Summit Pledge. This is what we, we wrote together. Collectively, we as union members are making a pledge to move toward a more collegial and productive campus climate at Los Angeles Mission College. We pledge to keep an open mind and put prejudgments aside when communicating with others, to be mindful of our own actions and statements and the effect that, it, that they have on others, to resolve differences in a respectful manner through open dialogue, to speak out when witnessing bullying and to let it be known that this type of behavior is not tolerated to refrain from sending harassing, intimidating, and or threatening messages through electronic mail or other means as stated in the District E-76 regulation, and to follow respectful email etiquette and to say no to group emails that harbor vicious attacks on colleagues by replying, no, this is unacceptable. We request that Any reports of workplace bullying be treated seriously and investigated promptly, confidentially, and impartially. All employees be encouraged to report workplace bullying and ensure any employee who make a complaint or witnesses a situation of bullying are not victimized. A formal conflict resolution group to be established on campus made up of union representation and administrators to process complaints of bullying.
Members of this group are to be formally trained in conflict resolution techniques. Support from administration to spread the message of this pledge to, to collegiality. Finally, we request that all members of Mission College family be held accountable for bullish behavior. This pledge is in support of the California Education Code, LACCD board rule, all union contracts and all college processes which are presently in place. So this is our pledge that we all came together. We are asking for everyone who would like to please um, sign the pledge forms that are going around. By doing so, you'll also get a beautiful, you know me, I like to show things off like Vanna, a beautiful bracelet. See the bracelet? Very nice. I don't know this when is, I'm going to cry. Oh. Crap at the hat. And I thought, oh, crap. I, I didn't know what to do after Zoila stole my wine. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. You could have just repeated it. Um, and then I Nobody cracked. Nobody would have cared. Okay. Let's um, continue our meeting at this point. And I'd like to welcome Scott Zvonkin. Okay. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I have not signed the pledge, so you're going to watch. This is, uh, I just figured, I'm a trustee, I can do this. Um, my name is Scott Svonkin. I'm a recovering bully. <laughs> well, you laugh. I've been accused of it, so I have to own up to it. Um, but I did sign it. I earned my blue badge, my blue uh, bracelet. Um, you have it. I'm not represented, unfortunately, but I wish I was. So how do I become a member of the AFT? We'll talk about later. Um, How's everybody doing this afternoon? You know, I've been on the board a little over 16 months, and I came here and asked for your support 16 months ago um, when I was running for the college board. And thanks to every one of your unions, I got elected. And I hope that I've done you proud. Now, I haven't always been polite to those that have stood in the way of standing up for our faculty and our staff. Um, and so for that, I apologize. I want to publicly apologize to the guy I yelled at a year ago at uh, Pierce College who wasn't listening when I was asking questions. And so I yelled at him, and so I apologize. And I'm being serious about this, because I have an 11-year-old daughter and a 6-year-old son. And at 46, I still can be a better person, a better public servant. And um, Joanne Waddell, John McDowell, all the different union leaders um, remind me when I sometimes get a little energetic uh, because I'm very passionate. And so I don't apologize for being passionate. I don't want you to apologize for it. But I do think it's OK that I can admit in front of all of you that I probably was a little aggressive with this vendor who was trying to tell me how to do my job. Um, it doesn't feel good when they, and by the way, I think he was wrong, but that I should have handled differently. Um, so I want to tell you two things. First of all, I want to thank you for not only helping me get elected to the college board, which I wanted to do for over 12 years. And actually, if it go, you go back with me in history to my days at Pasadena City College when I was student trustee. So you helped turn uh, my dream of public service into a reality. And I hope I do you justice on the board. I want to commend you for not only uh, what you've done today, because the, our board of trustees hears about your challenges every day. And I want to frame it for you. You've got a lot at stake in this. And this may feel touchy-feely to some. It may feel like you're not focused on what you should be because teaching is what you do. But if we can't get along and show the accreditation team that we're moving beyond our personal differences, it's going to cost us money, time, and could hurt the ability for this college to give degrees. So you've got a lot at stake. I'm here to congratulate you for doing this. I'm here because I'm in it with you, because every one of our campuses has to pass accreditation. We have to fix any of the problems we find, and we have to do it together. Fighting amongst ourselves um, and then coming to us and telling us trustees fix it isn't going to work because we can't fix it for you. You have to fix it on your own, and this is a, a good first step. So I want to, appa I want to applaud you. I, I want to tell you that I'm grateful to be here, um, and I'm grateful for your support. And I'm going to return that favor and be here anytime you invite me, like today. 
Um, last thing before I take questions is I want to thank you because if Proposition 30 hadn't passed, my worst nightmares would have come true. Community college turned my life around, folks. I was a high school dropout. And folks like you helped me through college and go to, I got to go to CSUN and I today have a beautiful family and a very good job and I'm very lucky. Um, but if Prop 30 had failed, um, we would be talking today about how do we cut $40 million from LACCD's budget, and we're not. Now, I can't stand here today and tell you everything's perfect because unfortunately we have a gap, about $10 million that we still have, but we'll find a way to fill it. Um, we're working aggressively. I'm gonna be pushing really hard and have the support of a number of my colleagues, and I believe the administration, to look at how do we become more efficient not how do we lay people off or how do we do furlough days, but how do we become more efficient? How do we buy products cheaper? How do we generate revenue on our campuses? So we're gonna look for other creative, innovative ways to make sure that we don't balance our budget on the backs of our faculty, staff, and the college students who, like me, need you uh, for their futures. So that's sort of a, um, I, one pledge I'll make to you today in addition to this one, although I'm not gonna sign it, is our goal, from, uh, as far as I can tell, from the Board of Trustees, is to take the money we're gonna get from the state of California, thanks to your hard work and labor unions across this straight state in passing Prop 30, we're gonna take that money and we're gonna put it back in the classrooms. So, and we're gonna hold the administration at this college and at every college accountable to account for how we're spending that money. And so, You'll begin to see new reports because we're obligated both legally and morally to watch how that Proposition 30 money is spent. And my commitment as one trustee, because I'm only one, I'm not the president this year, hopefully I will be someday, <laughs> but um, with your help. Um, but I will, um, I'll tell you that we will, we will make sure that the, the voters will is done and that the money is spent on classrooms and on students. And, and that's thanks to all of you. So I came here to say thank you. I came here to applaud your effort to work together. Um, I think it's a good step. And if you ever see me getting a little energetic or out of line, call me on it because I work for all of you. Thank you all. I'm happy to take a couple of questions if you have them, but I don't feel obligated if you want to get on with your lives. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Thank you, really, from the bottom of our hearts for coming out to uh, visit us today. Well, there's not much more left on the agenda. We spoke a little bit about Propositions 30 and 32, and again, we need to congratulate all of us for our efforts that we put into this. <laughs> President Perez met with the union, uh, well, actually, with myself and Monica for grievances and we asked him about um, the Proposition 30 funds and if they will be going back to the classroom. So. Yes, uh, we are going to put all that money into the classrooms for the spring, and we're going to have a little summer uh, before June 30. So that's where it's going. That's the best possible answer. <laughs> so uh, thank you. The next item on the agenda is short and sweet. I thought we were going to start up our next mobilization, our next political campaign to defeat Riordan's uh, pension plan reform for the city of Los Angeles employees. But I got a wonderful email from Joanne this morning saying that Riordan has pulled his uh, proposal because he wasn't getting enough signatures. And that, in great part, again, was because of union mobilization. These people who were collecting signatures were um, asked to stay in free speech areas and uh, were basically told that they weren't appreciated. So once again, this is, a, this is very good news because we could put our efforts and thoughts elsewhere, at least for the meantime. Um, we were supposed to have a professional growth presentation by Lilamani Da Silva, but they had a one o'clock um, probation evaluation committee. So um, Lil and a few people on that committee had to leave. So we'll leave that discussion for our next meeting. And I'll leave you to read the announcements on the agenda. And having said that, 
I thank you all. This has been an amazing meeting and something I'll remember for a long time, and I hope you will too. And let's continue this spirit which we've ignited today.